Sorry. Good morning. Good morning. I am glad that you all are here on Labor Day weekend. The, the few, the strong, thank you for being here. I would invite you to stand as we worship together. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day. Please be seated, and welcome to Mandarin Presbyterian Church. It is a joy to gather together in worship. My name is Andrew Stepp. I'm the senior pastor here, and if you are visiting with us today, if you are our guest, it is our honor to have you here today that you've chosen to spend this morning with us, so thank you for that. If you want to know more about what it means to be a follower of Christ or what it means to be a part of the MPC family, you can fill out the Connect card and place that in the offering plate when it comes around or hand it to one of our ushers or volunteers or one of the pastors. And on the back of the card is a really important place, and that is prayer requests. One of our greatest privileges is to pray for one another and for us as pastors to pray for you. So if you are a guest 
or a covenant partner here, someone who's been here for five minutes or for 50 years, it doesn't matter. If there's a way that we can be praying for you, please feel free to fill that out or email us during the week and let us know about that. I'd like to dismiss all the kids first through fifth grade to our kid men volunteers over there in the red shirts. If your kids are heading over there, you can pick them up after worship back in that hallway there. And while they are headed that direction, I want to invite everybody else to please stand, find somebody you haven't met before and introduce yourself and welcome them to worship. MPC. I'm Rachel Johns here to bring you all the latest news and information going on around the church. First things first, make sure you check in. If you're new here, head on over to our website. Click I'm new and fill out the information on your screen. Or you can also fill out the connection card in your bulletin. For MPC family, it doesn't get any easier than the Church Center app. Just open the app, click check in, and you're done. We are so glad you're here. Mark your calendars for Sunday, September 10th, as the church hosts the annual fall kickoff event, MPC Pop-Up Sunday. Join us in the courtyard before or after church as we officially kick off the fall lineup of MPC programs. There will be inflatables, snacks, and fellowship before and after services from 8.30 to 12. It's all happening right here, September 10th. On that same day, we'll begin our newest sermon series entitled, Different. To get even more out of the message, we invite you to grab a friend and take a closer look into the scripture with one of our MPC small groups. Find more information by contacting MPC small group coordinator, Cindy Althaus, or by visiting our website at mandarinprez.com slash small groups. Ladies, grab your bunko. What's a bunko? It's burgers and bunko with chicks on the side, sponsored by the MPC Women's Ministry. Lunch will be served from 11 to 12 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Bring your friends to see who is the best or the worst bunko player and compete for fabulous prizes. Childcare is available if you sign up by September 11th. Register on the Church Center app. That's it for this week's updates. Make sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our weekly newsletter so you never miss a thing. For MPC News and Information, I'm Rachel Johns. Stand us and help us stand up, help us continue to make a joyful. Yeah. 
be glad I chose to stay. Here I am, Lord, send me. Well done, good and faithful. I live to hear you say, Here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am. Please be seated and let us pray. Gracious God, how convicting our worship can be sometimes. Lord, we say, here we are, Lord, send us. Here I am, Lord, send me. Those words that before you even ask, my answer will be yes. Lord, I realize that more often than not, my answer is a maybe Let me think about it and see what you're offering. Forgive me and forgive us, Lord, for the ways that we allow our pride to get in the way of following you, of being sent by you. For the ways that we allow our own priorities or perhaps our fears and anxieties about what it would mean if we truly followed after you and whatever it was that you were calling us to do, however it was you're calling us to serve. Lord, we pray that the hesitant or skeptical part of us that isn't ready to say yes to you, Lord, that you would be at work in us from the inside out, transforming us to be more like Jesus, transforming our maybe into a yes to follow you wherever you lead As we've considered this this month what it means for us to grow and to take steps toward you, as we've considered invite and connect, equip, and today serve, Lord, we pray that you would give us clarity and courage on that next step for each of us. That you would give us clarity on what it is you want us to do to take the next step closer to you, Jesus, and deeper in your word that you would give us the courage not just to see that next step, but to take it, to obey you, to follow you. Give us the strength to say no to our own will, 
to our own selfish desires, to all the other voices and commitments that are trying to pull us away from following you and help us to say yes to you. As we consider what it means to serve you today, we recognize that we are in a world that is filled with darkness. It seems like there's never been a time where this world and our culture needs your light to shine bright. And so, Lord, we pray that you would call us forth from this place. Call us forth and send us wherever it might be, whether it's in our homes, our neighborhoods, our schools, our workplace, wherever it may be. Lord, shine your light through us. Use us to be vessels of your justice, of your righteousness, of your mercy and grace and love. Lord, use us to be a part of your transforming work that you are already doing. And Lord, we lift up those in our own community who are brokenhearted. Those who aren't able to be here today because of illness, ailments, disease, surgeries. Those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, a family, a friend. Those who are struggling with addictions and all the repercussions of that. Lord, we thank you that you are near to us in our darkest hour. You are near to us in our brightest hour as well, but in that darkest hour, you are particularly even closer than ever. And so for those among us who are walking through that dark valley, Lord, cling tightly to them as they seek to stay close to you. We thank you for the gift of community, the gift of your spirit, and pray that we would be a church that shines our light as bright as we can through the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we come now to our time of offering, the offering is all about responding to the gospel, responding to the work God is doing in your life. We respond not just with our financial gifts, but we respond by taking that next step deeper into life in the community. And as we've considered the last few weeks, what is that next step for you? How is God calling you to take the next step deeper? If you are a guest this morning, we do not expect you to give when the plate comes around, uh, but we do ask that we are generous with the church and generous with one another just as Christ has been generous with us. Will the ushers please come forward?
Let's pray together. God, thank you again for this day, and thank you for the opportunity you provide for us to give back to you. And God, you provide those opportunities every single day. Help us to have the eyes and the ears to be able to see and to hear and to know where it is that you are calling us to be, that we can step into those places. We ask and pray those things in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Well, before I get started, I wanted to share that I'm excited about a new support group that we have starting off later this month on Tuesday, September 19th. Um, we have a group that's called Overcome that's going to be kicking off. Um, we formerly had um, a ministry here at the church called Help, um, which was caring uh, for those in our community uh, with mental health um, struggles and challenges. And we want to be a community that, that is nurturing and caring for and walking alongside those um, that may be having those challenges. And so anyone who's pursuing mental, emo emotional, and spiritual wellness, this is a group for you. Um, we would love for you to be a part of it. It's an eight-week course, and then following that time, there's, there are regular meetings that we have um, that we're going to be starting in another group uh, that will be called Anchor. And so we're hopeful that you will be a part of this, uh, this ministry. If that's something that seems like would be a fit for you or a friend or loved one, uh, please reach out to us and, and let us know. I would love to talk to you more about it, but that's going to be happening in just a couple weeks. Well, next Sunday, as you know, you could not have possibly missed this. Um, it's going to be Pop-Up Sunday. If you somehow manage to miss the fact that it's Pop-Up Sunday, um, please tell somebody um, we will find help for you because that we've talked about it nonstop because it is going to be so exciting that we are going to step into some new things. For kids, they're going to be going to a new classroom. They're going to be seeing new teachers. There's going to be new experiences that they're going to have. Um, for us as adults, um, we may find that we are in the same rhythm and that we are in the same routine. Well, we as a church want to help you break out of that rhythm and routine into something new that God might be calling you into. And we think that there are a lot of opportunities to do that. So next Sunday, um, after worship and between services um, in the courtyard, we're going to have a lot going on where we're going to tell you about all the different ways that you can get connected and involved and hear more about the life of the church. So be sure to wear something comfortable as you know, um, Florida can be hot. Um, I've been encouraged by the cooler weather um, that we've had the last couple days, but it can be really hot, so you have permission to wear something comfortable uh, next week, and then there's going to be just a great time that we'll have in the courtyard together. So today we find ourselves on our final sermon in our sermon series on Grow, and what we as a church want for you is that you not remain stagnant, but that you grow in your relationship with God. And as you grow in your relationship with God, the impact that that will have, not just on you, but on those around you and the community that you are a part of, um, is tremendous. And so we want that for each of you. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at serve. The final of the four words are four verbs that we have been looking at, invite, connect, equip, and serve. And so today we land on serve. And all of these words are so connected to one another. Um, it's hard to, to split them apart from one another. We don't try to pursue just one thing, but we need to seek out living all of those things. It's, it's kind of like different food groups that are there. There's, an, there's importance to eating a variety of things and not just one thing all of the time. Well, the same is true in our faith. When, when we seek to live out these four words and who we are in our faith, I think it's the fullness of what God longs for us to be. So as I'm talking about serve this morning, there are a few things that I want you to specifically be thinking about for yourself. Uh, the first of those is what comes to mind for you when you think of the word serve? And for each of us, we all have different experiences of places that we have served. So maybe there is a service thing that you do on a regular basis, and that what, that's what pops into your mind as is, is you're thinking about serve. Perhaps you've been on a mission trip, 
And so when I mention the word serve, you think back to those, those examples and times when you were, were serving perhaps in a different context and the things that God taught you in those places. But I want us to be thinking also this morning about the why behind serving. Well, serve, as I mentioned, is a verb, as are all of our words up there. But a verb requires action. You know, according to the Oxford Dictionary, to serve is to perform duties or services for another person or for another organization. By definition, it's doing something for somebody else, not for yourself. That's why from time to time, you know, you may have been told, oh, that's so self-serving. Um, that's not a good thing if someone has told you that. <laughs> um, but when you hear that, it's, it's breaking the definition of what serve is to be, which is about doing something for somebody else. Not unlike volunteering, um, which is doing something especially for another person or an organization willingly without being forced or paid to do it. Um, you may have experienced that before too when you were voluntold um, by a spouse or your parent that yes, you were going to be doing this project and you weren't too excited about it. They made you do it. Well, sometimes those motives that we have behind why we are serving or doing things or volunteering they can be vastly different um, depending upon the different, the different times in, in our lives. Well, as we serve, there are a lot of reasons to serve. There are benefits to us personally for serving. It, it feels good to do something where you know you are making an impact and a difference in someone else's life. Um, it can bring people together. Serving is not typically done just by yourself. In fact, I'll be talking later about how it's so much better when there are others with you as a part of serving and the community connection that you have. You can learn something in the process of serving. I've been on numerous serving um, trips where in the, midst of, in the midst of serving, there's someone that comes in and explains the project that you're about to do and the why behind the project, why things are done a specific way, and, and what needs to happen. And as they explain those things, it gives you a better understanding of the community that you are serving. And, and you get to learn in the process of doing that. And then finally, one of the benefits that can come from that is that it just helps somebody else. And it can be such a positive feeling to be helping somebody else who's in need. So as Christians, as followers of Jesus, why do we serve? Why do we serve? Well, last week in his sermon on equip, um, Andrew emphasized two things. He probably emphasized more than two things, but there are two things I paid attention to, Andrew, so thank you. But the two things that he talked about that he asked us to write down were first, the importance of growing deeper in God's word, and secondly, growing closer to Jesus. And as we grow deeper in God's word, we are going to find how important it is to serve because throughout scripture there are passages that remind us of the importance of serving so we're going to see that and as we as we serve we are going to grow closer to jesus as i mentioned all of these words are interconnected but what we also find and what i found sitting here on the front pew the last three weeks is that whether Jen was preaching or Andrew was preaching, I kept thinking, you're talking about serve. You're not talking about your word because they're so connected to one another. I would, I would think to myself, don't say that. I'm going to say that in a couple weeks. <laughs> but they are so connected to each other that you can't talk about one without the other. So what does the Bible say about serving? There wasn't just one scripture that, that I wanted to share this morning. There were, in fact, a ton of scriptures that I wanted to share, but there are a few that I selected that really speak to the importance of serving. The first is from 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very word of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and power forever 
and ever. Amen. And from Galatians 5, 13, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. And from Mark 10, 43 to 45, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And then from Matthew 25, 35 to 40, perhaps the most familiar of the passages for us today. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Friends, these are just a few of the numerous passages that we find within the scriptures that point to the importance and really our challenge and call that we would serve. In the lobby, we have four mission words that are on the wall. In the lobby, we also have a lot else going on. On this wall over here, closest to the nursery, we have our mission wall. And the mission wall lists all of our international mission partners, um, those folks that are serving around the globe in, in different places where God has called them. And we as MPC support them financially and prayerfully and seek to encourage them. Um, on this wall here in the lobby area, we have our four mission words, invite, connect, equip, and serve. And there are a few more sentences that give you a little bit more than just the word itself as to why those words are important. And then on the wall over here, on the other side of the lobby, we have our national and local serve wall, and it lists different opportunities for you to be connected and serving here locally. Right now we're highlighting City Rescue Mission, uh, we're highlighting the food pantry, and also Meals on Wheels as opportunities where you could serve and be involved. And I mention those things because sometimes I will have people say, boy, I really wish there was a, there was a way for me to know um, which ministries were, were supporting around the world. And I think you've not looked at the walls in the lobby. So if that includes you, this is your out. Don't worry, no judgment here. It's going to be up there every single week for you to look at. You don't have to look at it this week. But it's a great way for you to be engaged, thinking about where people are serving, not just here in town, but around the world. It's a powerful thing to think about that other people have listened to the words from Isaiah 6, verse 8, Here I am, Lord, send me. And they have spoken those words themselves and have been called into different places and spaces around the world. Well, on the wall out there, bringing me back to my point, we have our four mission words, and right underneath serve, it says this. We believe God gives each of us unique purposes that can impact our community and the world. We will serve others in and outside the church, joining God's kingdom work, around us. Now, in hearing that, there's two things that really stand out, and the first is unique purposes. And I want to let you know that God has given you, as one of his followers, unique purposes. Now, those are gifts and talents. Those may be the house that may be the house that you live in, the situation that you are a part of. There are unique purposes that are present in your life that are not present for other people. They give you opportunities to serve in ways that others do not have. So we need to pay attention to those unique purposes that we have been given. Secondly, we are called to join God's kingdom work. We don't have to create something new, but we just need to open our eyes and see what God is doing around us. One of my favorite prayers to pray 
is that God would help me to open my eyes to see what he is doing so that I can join him in that. Oftentimes we can get caught up in the fact that we have to create this perfect thing or we have to do something new when in fact God is doing stuff around us every single day. And if we simply join in with that which is already going on, God can use us in remarkable ways. Well, we are a community, MPC, that is filled with people who serve. I think of Mary Topolsky, who every single week comes into the sanctuary and walks around and makes sure that every single pencil is back in its place and sharpened and ready to go so that you all can take notes and pay attention to what the pastor is saying. Write that last part down. She does that every single week and comes in here. And you can imagine she's walking through the entire sanctuary to do that. She is in her 90s, and she continues to serve and do that. When we arrived 16 years ago, she and her husband, Mike, were in here and were doing that, and she has continued doing that for longer than some of you that I'm looking at out there have been alive. <laughs> that is amazing. Carol Yelnick is in charge of the ushers. She's one of our elders here at the church, and every week she sends out emails to the ushers to remind them of the need for service so that they can be here to help out on Sunday morning, to pass the offering plates, to pass out bulletins, to welcome people as they are coming in, and all of the other things that ushers do behind the scenes. Adrian Peacock is a deacon who is in charge of communion. This, this bread does not slice itself, and she prepares communion for both services and gets ready. I do not think that she crushes the grapes herself. I think she buys the grape juice, but every single week when we have communion, she is the one that is setting that up so that we can celebrate the Lord's Supper together. I could go on and on as I look around the room at your faces, knowing the different places that you serve and knowing the different ways that you care for others within our community. It's an amazing thing. And God smiles when he sees the way that you are pointing others to Christ and discipling others and encouraging them so that they will grow in their walk and faith with God. Well, part of our being able to serve has to do with, with our availability. It has to do with that Isaiah 6, here I am, Lord, send me. And Andrew, in his prayer, I loved that he prayed that oftentimes, you know, our tendency is to fight against that. What we would like to say is, sure, I say that all the time. Here I am, Lord, send me. But oftentimes, we do have that sense of, ugh, my schedule's full. I don't have time today for that. But perhaps another day. It, it, can, be easy to, it can be easy to fall into that. But friends, we ought not to serve out of obligation we should not be serving out of obligation but we should be serving out of our response to god and the great things that god has done for us and the grace and mercy that we find in him when i was in college i was a i was a sophomore in college and i was a part of a, a christian ministry and i heard and understood for the first time what it meant to, to follow Jesus, to really follow Jesus. And I recognized that though I had grown up in the church and I knew a lot of the right answers and, and I could get by on, on, on some of those things, those answers that I knew, I realized that, that I really wanted to start living my life for Christ. I didn't want Jesus to just be my Savior, which was great. I was happy that Jesus was my Savior. But I recognized that I also wanted to live with Jesus as my Lord, the Lord of my life. And so with that, for me, that meant that, that there were going to need to be some, some changes that took place. And so there were, but, but one of the first things that I felt and sensed, I, I went to one of my friends who I knew was a Christian who was living out their faith, and I said to her, I want to serve. Help me find a way that I can serve. And that was the first thing that I wanted to do. It, it was a sense of gratitude that I had within me for what God had done and the grace and forgiveness that was extended. And, and my immediate response was, was to serve. It's, it's what God was calling me to do. And, and I hope that for all of us that when we serve, it can be out of response to God's love. Now, there's times we have to, 
You know, you hear the phrase, you got to fake it till you make it. Sometimes you have to jump in and start serving, and then you realize, this really is great. Okay, this is, this is fun. They're not things that we're always going to absolutely love that God calls us to do. But we do need to pay attention to the people and places and spaces that he puts before us because there's opportunities everywhere. And we don't serve to earn our way into heaven. There's nothing, friends, that we can do to pay back in gratitude for what God has done for us. We, we cannot earn it. That's why it's called, it's called God's grace that is extended to us. The price has been paid for you and for me by Jesus, and there's nothing that we can do. But in our gratitude, isn't it nice when, when people come back to you after you've done something for them and they, they say thank you? They don't, they don't have to do that, but when they do, I mean, they're expressing the gratitude that they have for something that has been done. Well, I have found, too, that that when I serve, I often feel like I get so much more out of it than, than I'm able to give. And, and you can feel guilty about that, but, but I think that there's something to that because when you are serving and loving others well as God has called you to do, there's going to be excitement, there's going to be energy, and there's going to be fulfillment that is there. If you are new to MPC, um, you may not know that in 2019, uh, our church partnered um, with the local Habitat for Humanity called Habijacks, and we built a home. And when I say we built a home, I mean we raised the money just from MPC. All the volunteers were from MPC, and we were hammering nails, we were putting up siding, we were putting down sod, we were putting in lighting fixtures, we were doing all of these things to build a house. And, and it wasn't just me that was doing it. There were over 160 volunteers that took part in this project. And I promise you that everyone who was a part of this project and serving ended up having so much fun that we decided to do it again. And so in 2021, we built another home. And it was such a gift to be able to be a part of something that was greater than ourselves. We had a prayer team. Um, there, were, there were some folks that said, I don't, have, I don't have the stamina to be able to, to go out and to, and to, build, to build the home. And, and it, was a, it was a little bit of a warm time of year that we were working outside, uh, as you know we can, we can have here in Jacksonville. And so they were part of the prayer team. And every single week when we were out working on the project, they were praying for us. And all of these people built tremendous bonds with one another. And there was a connection that we had. But beyond our connection, we recognized that it was not about what we were doing, but it was about what God was doing in and through us. God was using us in those moments and in those places to share the love of Christ with others. Sometimes we were sharing that with one another. There were also times we were sharing that with the community, with other people that would walk over and ask, what, I mean, in their neighborhood, who, who are you building the home for? And we were able to talk with them and, and, and get to visit some more. But it's building those bonds. And when you build those bonds, it's, it's like if you've been on a great team before and you just have these connections with your team, you're bonded together and, and you want to make sacrifices for one another. Serving pulls us out of our regular rhythm of things that, that we may be caught in and and can allow us to see the great things that God is calling us to around us. Well, I mentioned that serving is better together. Definitely better to do um, a, a boring activity with other people than, than by oneself. And I mean, if you think about raking, for example, if I told you I needed you to rake for, for four hours, and you'd be thinking, oh my goodness, I have to rake for four hours. This is, seriously, this is serious punishment. But I want you to think about it as a serve opportunity. Your serve opportunity is going to be so much more enjoyable, I would argue, if you have others who are serving with you. Because in the process of serving with other people, you may actually build rapport and have a conversation. And, and you start moving forward, and before you know it, the time flies by and you've cleaned up the area that you're raking, that work is done, and, and you're, you've completed the task, and in the midst of that, you have built tremendous bonds. Now, there's some of you that are out there with young kids that are saying, 
Are you kidding me? Raking for four hours by myself sounds amazing. <laughs> so if you're in that category, you can come forward after worship and we'll pray for you because you've got other things going on. Um, but truly, it's so true that when we are serving with other people, it can be such a great gift. And last week, I was talking to somebody that was telling me how much she loves doing the dishes. And I'm like, you love doing dishes? She's like, I love it. She said, because growing up, I would do dishes with my dad every single night. And so when I do the dishes, it reminds me of spending time with my dad. And so the passion that she has for, for doing a chore like dishes, I'll share her name afterwards if you don't like doing dishes and you want to invite her over to your house. But she loves it because it reminds her of that community that she has. Friends, we have those opportunities every single day around us. Well, in, in 2016, Hurricane Matthew struck, hit Jacksonville, and Pat Sullivan was asked to contact all of the youth in his small group to let them know that Hang 10 was going to be canceled for the week. And he let the person who was calling him know that they had no power and they had no water and that there were quite a few limbs and trees that had fallen down on their property. And two hours later, youth and parents showed up and spent the next five hours, not alone, but together, cleaning up all of the debris that had fallen on their property. They hauled it out to the street, and if you've ever been to Pat's, it's a haul to get anything out to the street. But when they were done, the pile of debris was eight feet high, 10 feet deep, and 100 feet long of all of the stuff that they had hauled out to the street. Friends, that is serve. That is serve, hearing about a need and meeting it. Last year, Hurricane Ian struck the west coast of Florida right near Fort Myers, and there was billions of dollars of devastation towards residences and businesses alike, and many were without utilities and water and electric for a long time. Well, Greg Cruz here in our congregation, having served other communities that were hit by hurricanes, jumped into action. And he started networking and connecting with others that were in that vicinity and area and connected with a church down there and, and found out what their needs were for those within the congregation and, and beyond. And many of you know the story that a group of people here at the church raised funds and, and they built and modified a 24-foot trailer into a shower, washer, dryer trailer. So this trailer has four showers, that's five, sorry, four showers, washers and dryers, hot and cold water, sinks. I mean, it is, it is outfitted and set so that mission teams could come in and serve and have a place to get cleaned up afterwards. And it is still in service. It is still working. That community is still using it. Hurricane Ian, though it was a year ago, the efforts for recovery are still continuing down in the Cape Coral area. And Grace Church in Coral Springs is grateful for the help that we have been able to provide to them through MPC and the folks that are here. And what great news that that is still being used today. And while we don't know yet what the next relief project will be from MPC, um, God knows. God knows what's next in the effort for the Hurricane Idalia recovery efforts, which I'm sure we too will be a part of. Well, each year, Mandarin Presbyterian Church sends students to Costa Rica, um, sends students on national mission trips um, to share the love of Christ with others. And when I asked one student this past week what God taught them serving, they said this, to have grace and love no matter what, because you never know the situation a person could be in. And I thought, wow, that's maturity and wisdom. You know, I expected in my question of, you know, tell me something about your trip um, that, that you think would be good to share about serving, that maybe they'd tell me a specific story or example of something, which would be great too, but they just immediately went to the heart of the how behind things of having grace and love no matter what, because you don't know the situation a person could be in. 
Well, that statement is right in line with what we find within the scripture again and again. In fact, 59 times within the Bible, we find the phrase one another, love one another, encourage one another, teach one another, serve one another. One another is present again and again, and it carries that same mindset of being thoughtful, thinking about someone else above ourself. It's looking not only to our own interests, but also to the interests of others. And that's out of Philippians chapter 2. It's not making assumptions about the needs that they may have, but it's asking them questions. What are the ways that we can come alongside you? How can we help? How can we pray for you? You know, often our tendency is that we just want to fix things that are present, and maybe all somebody wants or needs is somebody to listen to them. So by simply asking the question, how can we serve you? We can find out exactly, perhaps, what God is calling us to do. Well, next week is Pop-Up Sunday, and we want to help you find ways to connect, uh, ways for you to be able to grow in your own faith. And so in the courtyard following worship, there's going to be um, some different places and spaces that will tell you about those opportunities. Um, We're also going to have uh, opportunities for you to serve as well. And there are numerous ways to serve. Um, Throughout the week, there are ways to serve here at the church. Um, We have people that volunteer to answer the phones for us um, over at the other campus. We have people that are helping out here in this building. If you have handy skills and you're able to fix things, we can use your gifts and talents um, because we have multiple properties and uh, things don't stay brand new forever and and we need your help and, and assistance with that along the way. Well, and on Sunday mornings, too, there are so many different ways for you to connect with things on Sunday mornings, from either being a part of the music team, and we are grateful for those folks who share their gifts and talents with us and lead us in worship, to being a part of the tech team, uh, the folks who are behind the cameras and um, in the sound booth and and up above who are helping those that are streaming from home to be able to, to watch and be a part of what's happening in worship, from the hospitality folks who are helping to serve donuts and um, those that are serving coffee and those who are ushers and greeters. The list goes on and on. And we literally are going to list every opportunity that there is next Sunday out in the courtyard uh, for you to help. So please, uh, please be thinking about what those opportunities might be for you. And my request of you this week is that you pray. That you pray about where God would have you serve. And if you are not a part of MPC, I want you to pray about where God will have you serve in the place that you are. Because everywhere we are, friends, there are opportunities for us to serve. There are needs that are present. So where is it that God is calling you to serve Well, there are opportunities beyond these walls as well, and we're going to share those with you next week as well, too, in terms of mission, from the food pantry to Meals on Wheels to City Rescue Mission. We want to connect you with all of those uh, organizations that we partner with um, so that you might find that right fit. Well, this past summer, Jerry Althaus went on a mission trip to serve. If you know Jerry, he has served on a variety of mission trips, uh, a couple trips to China. Um, He served on some uh, trips here in Florida on hurricane relief work. Um, But this trip was a little bit different. This one was not on his radar. And he had a relative from out of town and out of state who called and asked him if he would be interested in joining their church's uh, mission trip. And this trip was to Togo, Africa. And so at first... Jerry had to pause because he had not been to Africa before, and anytime you're going somewhere different or new, um, there are things that you have to learn before you, before you travel there, and so there was a little bit of hesitation, but Jerry shared this with me when he said what, what made his decision easier. He, heard, he had someone share this with him a few years ago, this quote, and it's one that continues to speak to him today. This is the quote. It's easy to make excuses, but it's hard to say no when the creator of the universe is asking you. 
It's easy to make excuses, but it's hard to say no when the creator of the universe is asking you. So Jerry said yes to this trip, where he and four others um, from, this, from, that, from that church in South Carolina led a retreat for indigenous people in Togo, Africa. And so what that involved is that Jerry led the opening session, the closing session, and gave several talks in between. Now, that is not Jerry's natural gift set. But he allowed God to stretch him and use him. And in talking with him this past week about that experience, he said, I have never seen the Holy Spirit more alive in that experience of serving in a different place. And part of that is that he said yes to move beyond his comfort zone, to go to a different place. And it was such a humbling thing for him to see the way that God was able to use him in the midst of that space and time. In fact, he shared with me that when they arrived, he wasn't supposed to do the closing session, but the person that was going to do the closing session said to him, I don't feel like I can do it. Would you be willing to do it? (laughs) Well, I guess he said, here I am, send me, because he stepped up and did that too. Well, every week, friends, we have serve opportunities that are right here in front of us. We don't have to go to Africa to serve God. We certainly can But God can use us exactly where we are with the people that are before us to serve him. So I want you to ask yourself this question. How can I serve others? What are the opportunities that God has before me? Where is God working? And I want to encourage you to not wait for the perfect thing, to wait for the perfect answer to that question, but to get serving, to jump in, and get involved in God's kingdom work wherever you are. Amen. Well, on the night that Jesus was arrested, he was with his friends, the disciples, and they were, they were gathered around a table, and they had shared a meal together. And after the meal, Jesus took the bread that was there at the table, and he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new understanding sealed in my blood, which is shed for you. Brothers and sisters, as often as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim Christ's death and the promises that come with that until he comes again. Let us pray together. Oh God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the time now that we have to gather around this table to be reminded of the extravagant grace that you extend to each of us. God, help us to extend that to others in the same way that you extend that to us. Thank you for the love that you have. We ask and pray these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I would invite those that are assisting to please come forward.
please stand as we sing together.
as you go out this day, open your eyes and your ears to the places and spaces that God might be calling you to serve. And now receive the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all from this day forward and evermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.